Hi there, um, apologies for the delay in getting this next video out uh, but we've had a bit of a, a major building project going on in the house which overflowed into the garage and uh, it prevented me from gaining access to my machinery but anyway things have calmed down a little bit um, so in this video I'll be looking to machine the valve chest and valve cover for the Stuart 10V so I've just cleaned the sides up of the valve chest with a hand file and uh, last time I uh, had a go at machining a valve chest I forgot to uh, clean up the inside here the other side of this boss and the fact that I didn't clean it up meant that when I drilled through um, the drill bit uh, wandered off centre um, so this time round I'm going to try and clean that up uh, and I'm going to do it with this uh, little proxen tool I bought recently Well, strangely enough, the drawing doesn't give the outside dimension. Um, so what I've done is, um, I've worked out that the lagging will need to come around here. So the lagging is um, 0.5 of a millimetre each side. So this outside diameter needs to be um, one millimetre plus the width of that. Um, now that is 25.45 millimetres so this outside diameter needs to be 26.45 now um, it's currently 27.8 so take away 26.45 gives us 1.35 millimetres to come off so divide that by 2 is 0.675 millimetres to come off each side so I'll mark one side up um, put it in the milling machine and I'll mill it to that um, dimension then I'll reverse it and uh, do the other side Well, to err uh, on the side of caution, I uh, just took uh, 0.6 of a millimetre off that side. So I'll be taking 0.6 of a millimetre off this side. So uh, back to Imperial for fun. So this dimension here should be 0.5 of an inch, but it's actually measuring 0.556. So uh, I worked that out to be 28 thou to come off each side. Well that seems to have worked out okay. I've been trying this cutter out, uh, I got it from Cutwell and it's a PM60 and uh, the description says it's exceptional tool life um, and is a replacement for high speed steel and carbide. Um, so it 
seem to get a good finish on the cast iron and there's no obvious obvious signs of damage or anything like that on the end. So fingers crossed, let's see how that goes in future. I might buy some more of those. So um, now uh, I need to put this in the four jaw chuck and this outside diameter here needs to be 1.125 of an inch and it's currently uh, 1.222 um, so it's 97 thou of size so one of the first things I'll do is I'll take um, 49 thou off this side on the lathe and then I'll machine this bit here we'll drill through through into here and then I'll drill again and tap so let's see how we get on so it's taken me quite a while centering the cover on the uh, forge or chuck um, but if I measure this edge here and then turn the chuck 180 degrees measure this edge here just back the carriage off a bit I'm pretty much there and likewise if I measure this side we're on zero there. Turn 180 degrees. And I'm probably three four thou out. And likewise if I test it on the boss. Bearing in mind the boss isn't machined, so it's gonna be out anyway. I'm, I'm under 10 thou, well, around about 10 thou out. So I'm happy with that. So now I need to take 49 thou off this face here, which is uh, 1.24 millimetres, which equates to one full turn uh, plus 12 increments of the compound slide. So I need to reduce this boss um, to 730 seconds in length. Um, so I've used the dial gauge here on the carriage and um, set the carriage stop down here um, to be 730 seconds of an inch away from this front face. Um, so what I'll do is I'll um, increment the carriage um, by 0.25 of a millimetre which is just under 10 thou at a time. In, in hindsight I maybe should have ground this off because there's a fair amount um, to go but so the boss needs to be turned down to 3 eighths of an inch in diameter which is 0.375 of an inch. It's currently 0.4190 um, so that means it's uh, 44 thou over size. Um, so divide that by two. 22 thou needs to come off the side, uh, which is equivalent to 0.558 millimeters, which uh, equates to 27 to 28 increments on my uh, cross slide dial.
0.3755 that'll do me so now I need to centre drill and then um, drill a hole um, 330 seconds of an inch in diameter uh, right through the first boss and then uh, right into the far boss uh, by 1130 seconds of an inch deep So the drill bit is just touching the far end and I've measured that to be um, 11 30 seconds of an inch which is the depth it needs to go to. And as a double check 11 30 seconds of an inch equates to 8.73 millimetres. So using the dial I can double check the depth I'm going to. So I've just reversed the uh, drill bit into the valve chest, right to the far end and into the uh, far boss. And I'll just turn it to see if it runs true. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now I need to tap this to um, a quarter of an inch by 32 TPI. Now, um, to achieve that, it needs to be drilled uh, to a size of 5.7 millimeters. So, what I'm going to do first of all is drill to 4 millimeters, and then I'll do 5.7, and then I'll tap. Now, the depth I need to go to. I estimate it to be um, round about 7.68 millimetres. So um, I've zeroed the dial uh, on the tailstock. Um, this is uh, flush. Um, so I'll commence drilling. So it's going to be 7 turns of the dial plus uh, 34 increments to achieve. 7.68 millimeters. I've also put a little mark there as a double check. Well, the tapping went okay. I was just about to take the uh, valve chest out of the four jaw chuck. I thought I'd better double check everything and make sure I've covered everything off. And um, there's a bit of good news and a bit of bad news. The good news is I now realise that this hole beyond the thread, which is 3 30 seconds of an inch, that actually needs to be um, reamed up to an eighth of an inch. So the good news is I haven't removed it from the chuck, um, so I can go ahead and ream. Unfortunately, I've not got an eighth of an inch reamer, so what I'm going to have to do is send off for one and uh, I'll leave all this set up on the lathe and uh, when I receive it, I'll just give it a quick ream, just this end to an eighth of an inch and I need to leave the hole in the 
uh, Farbos at uh, three thirty seconds of an inch. So while I'm uh, waiting for the reamer, I might as well start on this uh, valve chest cover. So this is currently um, 0.148 of an inch uh, thickness. So that needs to be reduced down to an eighth of an inch. So that's 23 thou to come off it. So I'll uh, just put it on the uh, mini mill and uh, probably cut uh, a couple of 10 thou increments and then finish it with a, th uh, with a three thou. But we'll see how we get on. I just don't believe it. I've uh, managed to uh, only cut about 10 thou off and uh, it's just totally messed up this cutter that I got from Cutwell. So uh, that's very disappointing. So now I'll have to resort to uh, a very expensive cutter. This is a Sandvik. Well, that was a totally different experience using the Sandvik. Um, the finish is superb, cuts through it like butter. Um, the, the, the cutter I got from uh, Cutwell was uh, about 20 quid, so it wasn't a cheap one. Um, and I think the Sandviks are probably three times that price. Um, but I suppose you get what you pay for. No point in paying 20 quid for a cutter that lasts a couple of minutes when you can buy an expensive one that will last a lot longer. So I think I might have to invest in a, a couple of Sandviks in future. So the eighth of an inch reamer arrived and uh, I reamed it off camera. So that was reaming the other side. And um, I've switched the chest round now in the four jaw chuck and centred it. And now it's just a matter of taking 50 thou off this front face here and tidying up the boss. Well, the steam chest has uh, turned out very, very well. Uh, very happy with that. And in terms of the cover, uh, the cover uh, fits nicely. And what I've done is um, measured the top of the cover, divided that dimension by two, and then reduced the height on here by that amount and then scribed a line for the centre. What I've then done is found out what the distance is between the two holes, uh, divided that number by two and then reduced the height again by that number and scribed a line at the bottom and I've turned it round and scribed the other line at the bottom. Then I've done exactly the same thing on the other sides. So now I've got marked out the positions where the uh, 7BA holes need to be uh, drilled. Okay, so I've uh, just made a little mark on the intersection here um, with the centre drill. Now the distance between this hole and that hole is 27 30 seconds of an inch which is 21.43 millimetres and that equates to 10 full turns uh, plus 71 and a half increments on the uh, x-axis dial. Likewise the distance between these two points is 19.84 millimetres uh, which is 25 30 seconds of an inch and that equates to 9 full turns of the dial plus 92 increments and that's on the y-axis. So I've gone round making the marks and they're all spot on um, so what I'll do off camera is I'll just uh, repeat the process I'll centre drill replace the drill bit with a 2.6 millimetre 
drill bit and drill right through which is 7BA clear. So the holes in the cover have worked out OK and I've just placed the cover onto the chest and uh, put it in the vise just to hold it in place and now I'm just going to gently tap with this uh, little uh, centre punch just to slightly mark where those holes should be and that'll be a guide for when I'm marking it up okay so the um, punch didn't really uh, work it the, the marks weren't very clear at all so what I've decided to do is to lock tight the cover um, onto the chest and use the cover as a template so I'm going to go around uh, drilling through with this 2.6mm drill bit. Once I've done that I'm going to remove the cover and then I'm going to open the holes up with a, a 2.7mm drill bit just to give me that extra little bit of wiggle room um, for the chest. Okay, so uh, now it's time to uh, drill and tap the four holes for the studs to hold the uh, steam chest and cover on. And um, thinking a bit forward, which makes a change for me, um, I've decided that um, on this side of the cover I'll put the steam inlet union. Um, on this side of the cylinder I'll put the exhaust union and on this side of the cylinder I'm going to put a couple of drain cocks. So I think that should look okay. Okay so to uh, hold the cylinder for drilling the studs um, I've used this uh, piece of aluminium bar that I used previously. Um, so I'm holding that in the vise and uh, I've just sort of tightened it up with this uh, bolt here. I've used this gauge just to make sure that the uh, top surface is parallel with the table uh, which it is now and uh, what I'll do is I'll just hold the cover on and rather than try and do a transfer punch um, I'll try and position the drill bit through one of these existing holes just to uh, line up the first hole. Once I've done that I can use the same method that I used to drill the cover and the chest by moving the hand wheels and double checking. Well I'm pretty happy I've uh, got the drill chuck centred on the first hole. Um, so what I'll do is I'll replace the drill bit with the centre drill. I'll just hand turn it, make a mark, then I'll move the dials across. I've zeroed the dials by the way at that position. And I'll move the, move the dials across in the same way as I did the cover um, and the chest. Uh, just marking. I'll double check, then I'll drill to, well I'll centre drill properly, then I'll drill to uh, 2.1 millimeter in diameter and then I'll tap. But I'll do all that off camera. What I decided to do, just as a double check, is put this little piece of bar in here just to make sure that um, the cylinder remains parallel just to err on the side of caution really because um, I was concerned that maybe there might be some movement but uh, it all works out okay and uh, it fits very very nicely So very happy with that. So for the drain cocks, what I've uh, done is I've drilled right through with a, a fine drill bit. And then I'm going to um, drill with this 3mm drill bit um, part way through, um, just avoiding breaking out at the bottom. And then I'll repeat the same 
with a 4.5 millimetre drill bit and then I'll tap. Well that was an interesting little exercise and uh, this little engine is starting to come together now. Uh, I think I need some fibre washers or something for these drain cocks just so they can be sort of like nipped up into the right orientation and I've decided for now not to drill the inlet and the, and the exhaust ports until I've got some um, connectors and then that will uh, sort of help define what, uh, what uh, tapping I need to, uh, to do. Um, apart from that it's really starting to come together. Um, I need to uh, sort the eccentrics out and the valve timing um, but we're getting very very close and uh, I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice provided and in particular Peter aka Model Steamers who um, has been extremely helpful if I've got any questions uh, he's always there to uh, provide me with, with some help and guidance so thanks very much Peter and uh, hope you all like the results so far